coming up, Alan and I have met up once again, ready to explore another section of the Basingstoke Canal. This time we will complete our journeys eastwards and go all the way to the end of the Basingstoke Canal and see how it joins up with the way navigation. Hi, I'm Warren Brand and welcome to another Linley's video. At West Byfleet we pick up from where we left off, right at the lock next to this lovely cottage. The sun is out, the day is warm and we have a coffee and a snack in our backpack. Each section of the canal has its own charm, a unique character and individual things to spot along the way. Here there are some boathouses moored up at private moorings. Some of the craft look very ornate, some with remarkably striking colours too. Many of them don't really look like they're floating, just homes surrounded in water. Lock 1 lies quiet today, no crafts are travelling through at this time. The water dribbles out from under the upper set of gates while the lower gates are left open. That's not right really, the last boat should have left the gates closed to save water being wasted.
low GPS. Yeah. As we approach the very last part of the Basingstoke Canal, the main southwestern railway line from London to Southampton runs right alongside again. We've been following the same main route all the way. This point on the waterway is a T-junction with the way navigation going straight through, mostly north-south and the Basingstoke Canal joining in on the west side. This boat is travelling north under the railway lines and approaching the junction. Alan and I have had a choice to make here. Which way to continue? We've more time to spare and we'll be meeting our wives for a celebratory meal at a local pub nearby. We head north to find the next lock up the way navigation. The massive columns here hold up the M25 viaduct section just south of Heathrow Airport. The constant hum of the traffic can be heard even right underneath the massive concrete structure. The way navigation is wider here than the Basingstoke Canal and maybe even a little bit deeper too. Not far along, we arrive at New Hall Lock with the lovely old canal side cottage nearby. After our coffee and snack, we return southwards back under the M25, ready to head further south to find the pub where we have a table reserved.
know. Along here, on the other side of the canal, there are some lovely properties with very ornate gardens. Either side of the A245 road bridge here, it's quite a busy place with a boat hire centre on this side and a boat yard along the canal on the other. Murray's Bridge is almost derelict now, but was built originally to link the very large old private house of West Hall with the town of Byfleet. Through more very peaceful countryside, we arrive at Dodds Bridge, which, although is in use, it doesn't really go anywhere these days.
we pass the entrance to the large Pryford Marina where canal boats and other craft are moored. And then we arrive at the Anchor Pub, but there's still time for me to take a look at the lock by the bridge before ordering a pint with Alan. See the strong flow of water here entering the lock from the gate? That's a big mistake. The first sluice gate was opened far too much too quickly and this water flow has pushed the poor narrow boat about and the owner struggled to keep it from banging the plastic boat. I hope you've enjoyed watching this mini-series. Alan and I plan to restart our adventure from Farnborough Airfield and head westerly towards Greywell. Watch out for another couple more videos. Alan's wife brought along a tea towel with a map and photos of the canal. While we wait for our meals, we're tracing with our fingers the tour along the tea towel fabric. Thanks for watching and bye for now.